Money is a tool for progress, not stress. Money can be your biggest enemy or your best friend. And it used to be my biggest enemy for a long, long, long time. But when you change your relationship with money, you become more in control of your life. When you're in control of your finances, you can live a bigger life and make a bigger impact with your side hustle pursuits. The Perspective Podcast is fuel for your mind and creative grind. Each week, we break down the art of healthy hustling, overcoming the inner critic, and growing your creative business. What's going on? You're listening to episode 184 of the Perspective Podcast. I'm your host, Scotty Russell of Perspective Collective, and my mission is to help you grow a fulfilling, profitable, and sustainable creative side hustle or whatever creative pursuit you're pursuing. At the end of each episode, I plug a listener of the week, so stick around to figure out how you can get a permanent shout out on a future episode. Before we dive into today's big episode topic, I want to introduce you to the Fall 2020 Side Hustlers Coaching Program, Rockstar Students. This is batch three, round three of the program. Leading off in no particular order, we got Jackie Matsutani from California, Katie Young from Washington, Chris Gore from North Carolina, Shireen Chu from California, Wilmar Colmenares from California, Sarah Avisado from Texas, Moral Cravens from Michigan, Nick Sanchez from Cedar Falls, Iowa, a local homie over here. We got Marvin Nunez from Massachusetts, Lane Ewing from Indiana, and Nicole Aguiano from Colorado. We're going hard in the paint over the next 12 weeks by leveraging our day jobs to fuel the dream job. So stay tuned for more student spotlights where you can get to know these creatives. But in the meantime, you can learn more info about the program and join the spring 2021 waitlist over at SideHustlersCoaching.com. Let me ask you, did your computer or iPad recently take a dump on you? And I'm talking figuratively, not literally, and you're scrambling to replace it. Is there a conference or an online course or some type of program, like a coaching program you want to invest in, but you don't want to use a credit card? Or are you looking for ways to generate extra side income to build a savings or attack debt so maybe one day you can take the full-time grind leap? If so, I got you covered as I've sourced a ton, I mean a ton, of money-making ideas throughout my social media channels and I compiled them into a list within this episode. So today, we're going to break down both fast and mid to long term options to generate cash both creatively with your gifts and your talents, as well as non creatively. I truly, truly, truly believe if you want something badly enough, you're going to find a way to make it happen. And that's what this episode is about today to help you enable you to make things happen. And this episode, I got to just be upfront. This is not a get rich quick scheme, a hack, snake oil, sales pitch, none of that, nor is it a way to make a quick buck to spend on stupid shit. It's not about that. Everything I stand for is about the slow and steady grind to survive and thrive long-term doing what you love with your creativity and a creative side hustle. My goal today is to help you get one step closer to where you want to be financially in the micro, short-term, in the macro, long-term, bigger picture. That way you can invest in your personal growth and development as well as potentially putting yourself in a position to make the leap to doing your thing full-time one day. And bonus, I'm ending this episode with some smart money moves that have changed my family's financial future and benefited my business, you know, my creative business. And I hope there's a lot of value you can find in that. Before we get started, today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Retro Supply. They are the leading provider of Illustrator, Photoshop, Procreate, and Affinity Design resources to make your work stand out in a fraction of the time. Take advantage of 20% off with my never expiring promo code SCOTTY20. That's SCOTTY with the Y20. You can also find a link to the full episode in the form of a blog post, which contains all the links and references that I talk about in the show uh, via your show notes on your favorite podcast app you're listening to. And it's because of you sharing the show that this podcast continues to grow. So if you found value in this episode, please do me a favor by sharing a screenshot or a video of you listening or working to uh, in the background. Make sure to tag me on Instagram so we can connect and I can reshare the love back. As always, keep an open mind and act on anything that inspires you today. Let's go. Leading off, since this is a show for creatives and artists and designers and freelancers and so on and so forth, let's kick it off with how to make money with your creativity. And we're going to be talking about some fast money-making options as well as some mid to long-term money-making option plays. 
And just so you know, like I broadcasted this question like, hey, how do you make money creatively or non creatively to my personal Facebook page, to uh, the private, the perspective collective Facebook group? It's free. You should join it um, all over my Instagram. So I have compiled a lot, a lot, a lot of answers for here, or at least picked out some of the ones that I felt applied most, other than the ones of like, I sold drugs. And I'm like, okay, that's that's not relevant to here. We're not, we're not about that life. So leading off, we're going to start with fast money making options. So the first one, create an art album on Facebook and sell your work locally and or ship it. So I've done this multiple times. I did it last year around August after I got done with a live event. I had all these extra prints and stuff left over um, from the booth that I had. I just made an August art sale and I listed it on Facebook. Um, and I even put it, I think, on the marketplace. And I made a couple hundred bucks in like three days by just selling um, like eight by 10 prints, uh, stickers, sticker packs, and the pins that I had on hand. I've also done this around like Black Friday. I've created an album via Facebook and kind of built some hype like, hey, this is coming, get ready. And uh, I had a lot of local support help me out with this and uh, purchase my stuff. So definitely there's easily been two times I know I've done this and it worked really well for me and local people want to support me. And then I had other people who wanted to buy it that I would ship it to. So uh, number two, fast money making option. Easy, simple, offer flash sales to your current shop to generate quick sales. For me, this isn't something I do. That's not my type of brand of like, offering promo codes to just like get stuff off or hey if it's here's a president's day sale that's not what i do you know if you're gonna get a promo code for me it's generally like a first week reward right when i launch something new like a special offer but otherwise like you're not gonna catch like black friday discounts i just don't want to go that route that's not me but maybe that works for you with your type of brand but it doesn't work for my brand i'm not gonna judge you uh number three this one comes from danny bachelor they stay, They offer quick photo sessions or offer digital paintings. That's a quick way that they uh, make fast money. Uh, my homie Derek Johnson, Ace, a local dude of mine, he talked about uh, freelancing cold leads research. So he says for his business that's not even creative, he searches Facebook groups where the type of service he provides may be needed. He uses the search function for whatever the X service is that people could be actively looking for to hire. So maybe for you, maybe it's logo design, maybe it's uh, illustration, maybe it's photography. And within that group, he goes to people's like looking for hire requests and he'll hit them up uh, in a perfect world. He'll request to be paid up front, but in a non-perfect world, you've got to at least request like a 50% deposit and then knock out the work super quickly. And he's done this with uh, his $997 website builder that he quickly leverages with this tactic so he can make super quick money looking for people who need websites and he has like this tool um i'm not sure what he what he does it in but um yeah he can build out websites super quickly makes a quick grand at a time so number five this one comes from my new fall 2020 coaching program student chris gore they stay making art from found objects and selling them you know i'm assuming on facebook market whatever i've personally done this as well and I've found like old globes or um, old axes and hatchets or old framed maps that I found like thrift stores or um, flea markets, whatever. And I've just drawn on them. And then again, I post them on my Facebook profile or Facebook marketplace. You'll find a theme here. Uh, number six, I I've seen this on Instagram a lot. So when posting your custom logos, your badges, or maybe it's a t-shirt graphic on social media, maybe it's just like personal work of yours that you're putting out there to try and attract a specific type of client who wants to hire you for this type of work. You can simply mention this piece is for sale in your caption and that you can provide like dynamic text or elements that elements or text can be changed. You know, make a little note of that. I know people who will like sell logos or uh, badges or t-shirt graphic concepts on the fly in their work. So those are some fast money making options. And if you have more, like hit me up and I'll add to this because this lives as a blog post that I can continually add to and update. But let's pivot and let's uh, talk about some of the more mid to long term money making options with your creativity. I should make a quick note on this one to be profitable over time with these options. A lot of these require having some type of mid to large engaged audience. OK, so slow and steady grind to build and work your way out to these to where these options can be very profitable. So number one, you can easily start right now in Etsy, a Society6, a Redbubble, Printful or Creative Market Shop online. You can do that right now. And you could do things like slaying your stock photos. You can do vector packs, sticker packs, prints, wallpapers, um, mock-ups, whatever. So a little bit more on that. We'll kind of get back around. My buddy Ian Deloney, 
Shout out to Ian, listener of the podcast. Um, what he does is he'll sell posters and calendars of his work. And he also mentions that um, once in a while in a non-creative world, this could be in like the next part two portion of this, but he mentions he also flips some hype clothing and shoes. So he does that on the side. Um, there's also ways that you can join freelancing sites like Upwork and Fiverr to get your name out there and make some quick buck. I can't say I'm a huge fan of Fiverr, but you got to do what you got to do to make some money. I know it's super competitive and people are always charging like a low rate and it kind of waters things down. No offense from some international people or maybe like the currency exchange rate is like way lower. So, you know, maybe a hundred bucks to us isn't much, but a hundred bucks to them, it's a lot. So you're competing with a lot of things like that, but you know, no shame in the game. If that's what you got to do, then I totally respect it. My side hustle coaching program student, Chris Luddig, number four, he says, it's mad easy to make coloring books using your line art and going through Amazon to produce and sell the coloring books. All it's going to cost you is your time and promotion if you choose to promote it. Uh, Another idea, number five here, what you can monetize is just by repurposing textures that you use all the time or presets that you use all the time or actions that you've set up all the time, you know, to save yourself some time or like brushes, you know. Again, all these items you constantly use in your design work, but they save you time. You can repackage them up and sell them on those sites, as I mentioned earlier, um, like Redbubble, I think, uh, Creative Market, so or even on your own personal site. Number six, another option you can do is create your own font. Again, sell them on those sites that I've uh, mentioned before. I know some people who are just crushing it by creating and selling their own fonts right now. Here's a very interesting one, number seven, and this is from the homie Joshua Sullivan. Fried Design Co. and Supper Agency, and this was episode 168, go back. But in our conversation, he talked about creating ghost brands. And with my students or people like you all the time, I talk about if you're in the branding identity world and there's a specific type of work or a market you want to attract and do more work of, then create a fake brand around it. But Josh takes this one step more and he calls these ghost brands. And again, if there's like an idea or a brand or a market they want to be a player in with their their, uh, agency... You know, they'll create this ghost brand around it to attract that specific style of worker client they want to work with. And within this ghost brand, uh, they will go all out in terms of like brand identity systems and showing how the brand would exist in a tangible commercialized setting. So, for example, uh, God, low hanging fruit here, coffee, you know, make a dope coffee uh, brand identity system, responsive identity kits elements to go along with it then they'll show how it looks within the coffee shop how the cups would look how like a fake mural in the background would look all these resources that would go along with it and from here they would show this in like a creative brief or if they had like a client inquiry who was maybe in the coffee business they would propose this ghost brand to them and sell it to them like here you go i have this ghost brand it's all set up text and elements can be interchangeable or swapped out or replaced so They basically have these ghost brands just sitting there that they can go and sell to a potential client who's a good fit. So that's a pretty cool idea, um, especially if you're going that more freelance or agency route. So something to keep in mind on the back burner. Another one, number eight, enable advertising revenue on your YouTube channel. Something you can do there. I have not done that because I don't have a large YouTube following. So you get to listen to my podcast for free with no ads on YouTube. Uh, Number nine, you can monetize your YouTube with uh, live super chat features by hosting like maybe live drawing sessions. That's pretty cool. I see people doing that. Um, Or you can monetize your Twitch channel uh, by doing live drawing sessions, building an audience around it. Again, there's 10 options right there that you can do creatively that are more mid to long term play. And a lot of them require having like an audience that you're growing or getting your work out in front of people, or even like running uh, Facebook ads on the side. You got to spend some money to make money to like maybe drive people to your shop or to your digital products. Okay, so those are fast and mid to long term ways that you can make some money with your uh, creative talents. Now let's shift and pivot over to non-creative options to make money. Quick notes on this one. Some of these are spend money to make money plays. And another note here, I'll add this into the show notes, but I see a lot of people always posting profitable side hustle ideation threads in the Dave Ramsey baby steps community. I have a link to that as well in the full episode show notes. So let's start off by fast money making options. This one has been huge for me and my wife selling shit on Facebook marketplace or eBay. We haven't done so much eBay, but tons of stuff on Facebook marketplace. So what do you got to do here? Just 
sell tons of stuff you collect or don't use anymore that's just lying around your house or in a storage shed or in your garage. Fun fact about this, Emily and I, we started selling stuff on Facebook Marketplace, I would say July 2019, once we really started getting serious about paying off debt. We're like, yo, what can we start selling? We easily made a grand in a week by just selling shit on Facebook. Crazy, absolutely crazy. We've easily made, I would say, as I record this, from July 2019 to July 20, within that span of a year, we easily made over $5,000. $5,000 we just threw at debt solely by just selling stuff on Facebook Marketplace. And other ways you can do it. In case you don't have like stuff around your house that you collected or don't use anymore to sell, that's fine. Now you can do things like go to garage sales, go to Goodwill, go to thrift stores, go to flea markets um, when they're open again to find items you can easily repurpose or refurbish and then resell at a higher price. Gary V has a bunch of information. Gary Vaynerchuk, in case you don't know who he is. A lot of people don't like him, but I do. I kind of find myself as like a, a mini Gary V in the creative space. Very uh, loud, direct, maybe pushy a little bit and swear a lot. So I can see why maybe my style isn't good for people, but I digress. Whatever, neither here or there. But he has a lot of good information about reselling stuff, going this route, and then selling it through eBay. Um, and things like uh, Emily and I have done, Emily has bought like random things in the past, like lockers or benches, chairs, and lamps, and then she churched them up, refurbished them, um, and then flipped them for a pretty penny. Some cool ideas there too. So if you're crafty at home or your wife is, or your partner, whoever, um, maybe they can flip something like that, just spruce it up a little bit. So my homie Adis Vajlic, my, my local shoe puck, my Bosnian friends, he had a cool one. He flips Lego sets, basketball cards, and shoes. So... Uh, for each one of these now. So he purchases new Lego sets for the Lolo on Facebook Marketplace and then sells them higher on eBay for a lot more. And he says that you can always check the sold tab on eBay once you search the item and see what it's listing for in real time before buying a set. And then for the shoes, he'll go on Facebook Marketplace or on eBay and he says you want to make sure to download the Nike Sneakers app, Kill the Vowels, and follow some sneaker accounts to figure out which ones will be worth the money to resell. And then finally, he says the basketball cards, like basketball cards are on fire right now and making a comeback. So those usually go well on eBay. Man, I should really look through my stack of basketball cards because I got a massive collection from when I was a kid. Uh, Number two. So number one was just selling shit on Facebook Marketplace or eBay. That was a long-winded answer, but a bunch of ideas baked into there. And I can attest that these do work to make quick money. Number two, Billy Barshow. A local friend of mine, he says, find out when certain locations have a bulk trash item pickup day. Whew, what a weird but like great idea. He states, sometimes people are throwing away great items on their curve because they're just too lazy to sell them or they just think it's junk. You know, one man's trash is another man's treasure and this is so true here. He says you can then sell them same day on Facebook Marketplace or he uses an app. He's in Arizona now, but I think he uses an app called OfferUp. He says it has its pros and cons, so maybe you could double list it some places. Number three, get a part-time delivery-based job, all right? Especially with this pandemic, delivery-based jobs are highly in need and demand right now. So uh, you can get a part-time delivery job for Amazon, Lyft, Uber, Uber Eats, Grubhub, DoorDash, Postmates, or pizza delivery. Like these are killer ways to generate quick money on your own downtime. I had a lot of friends tell me this is what they do. They make killer money in that Dave Ramsey's group. Um, Dude, you got people leaving their full-time jobs just because like their part-time delivery demand just like went up and then it freed them up to pursue their side hustles creatively on the side too and grow that. And they got to be their own boss, make their own hours. So, you know, could be an awesome idea that could really yield a lot of potential. Number four, donate blood or plasma. This could be some easy, quick money for you as well. Uh, My mother-in-law, she easily makes $300 a month by going, I think, like once a week. And I know other people who make like $600 or more doing this per month by just spending like a couple, like an hour or two per week just going out to donate. So could be a cool idea. I don't like needles, but I love getting tattoos like that. So big difference. Number five, Melissa Marzan, Miss Mermaid over here, the letter mermaid on Instagram from the Side Hustlers Coaching Program. She states, uh, scavenge Craigslist for local labor jobs. And personally for me, I recently heard of an app as I was building this out called TaskRabbit to find local work in your area that people just need help with. So could be something to look into. Number six, this one comes from Alex Peterson Barris. 
and she states, ask locally on your Facebook profile if anybody needs random jobs done in the area. She says she's landed a steady part-time gig this way, but it started out as just a super random oddball job for a couple hours here in town, and that was super quick cash. Number seven, this one comes from Chuck Castillo. Uh, He says he makes baked goods and slangs them locally. Right on. Get to bacon. Wake and bake. Literally. This one comes from Chitokan. They say they take on local landscaping jobs. So something you could look into, especially if you're like handy outside in the landscaping world. Me, not so much, but I can mow a pretty dope yard in a straight line. So this one, number nine, comes from Joy Letters. Uh, She says tutoring. So she, I, I'm taking it maybe tutors like local kids or maybe even more on an online platform because that's huge right now due to the pandemic. So um, I'm learning more about this online platform, online education for students called VIP Kid. I learned about that from the Dave Ramsey group. That seems to be really, really, really popular. So maybe that's something you can flex or maybe your partner could do too if they're in the education world. So number 10, babysitting. All right, super easy. Duh. But, you know, that, that old job that high school teenage girls were doing could be something you could do. You know, there's a bunch of babysitting apps out there with the main one I'm seeing being care.com. So just an idea. Number 11, take up dog walking or becoming a dog sitter. So if you like those pets and you like to get exercise, there could be a little uh, opportunity there for you too. And then um, number 12, trade in your old phones or electronics. So Emily and I made a couple hundo a piece for selling back our old iPhones when we upgraded. AT&T bought our phones back, or you could go the route. I saw other people when it was too late or were buying it for even a higher price on Facebook Marketplace. So ideas there. Now let's pivot over to mid to long-term money-making options without having to be creative. So number one, I'm gonna try to fly through these now. You can take surveys online for money from sites like Swagbucks and Survey Junkie. I saw were like some of the two top options. There's more. Number two, this one comes from the homie Cameron Sandage. I've been hearing a lot about this. So selling on Amazon via buying goods for places like Alibaba and then doing a fulfilled by Amazon FBA. For real, I keep hearing about so many people doing this and so many success stories that this potentially could be another nice little side hustle that could replace your day job and free up your creative side hustle time, you know, your pursuits there. Again, like that Dave Ramsey group, I hear so many people talking about this. And this one's also from Cameron Sandej. He says, uh, slight selling of the soul. Shit, I should have added this one to the um, creative-based ways of mid to long-term. I'll have to change it in the blog post. Slight selling of the soul, he says, but things I'm considering doing is setting up a Redbubble account and making 6 to 12 fast designs based on popular trends that I see sell well and just seeing if I can generate you know, a few hundred dollars per month. And these designs aren't going to be something I put a lot of time to, into. They'll be uh, slightly designed better and then well, marketing ads via Facebook and Instagram. So potentially drive some sales, you know, toss maybe like five bucks a day or 10 bucks a week to something like that to try and uh, drive some, some traffic to it, some cold traffic. I'm going to, bu- I'm going to bump that one into the, the mid to long term creative selling here. So you'll see that in the full blog post. Uh, number four, this one is from Justin Blair and he is a specialist in finding and flipping used books from thrift stores by uh, scanning them with this app called Scout IQ, and then he resells them through Amazon. I think it might be the FBA program that he does too with that. Uh, number five, monetizing your web traffic with affiliate-based links or ads. Number six, uh, you could start a Facebook group and share affiliate-based lightning deals on Amazon or other incredible deals around the web that are affiliate-based. Dude, I know so many stay-at-home moms who are crushing this avenue right now. And I've been trying to push my wife to do it too because she always can find a good deal. And she's so good at providing value to other moms. And she's super passionate about it. I'm like, yo, you have a business opportunity right here that you know we can get you staying at home sooner if you can start getting this going. So I'm pushing her. This is a public call out to her to get on that shit, start that group. So those are both creative ways and non-creative ways to make money fast or, or mid to long-term plays that I think could really yield a, an incredible result for you. And let's end this with the bonus round with those smart money moves. So as we wrap this up, I want to make sure I get a chance to share some things that have helped us crush debt, free up income, and save up hella quick for things like an emergency fund, a nest egg, or for things that we want like vacations, new furniture or appliances that we can just pay in cash. Uh, I also leverage a lot of these following tactics for my creative business. So get ready for this one. 
I got a lot of ideas for you here. So uh, a lot of sub ideas within this main idea. So number one, just cut your overhead expenses. All right, lean it out. And a great way to start by doing this is just like listing out all your expenses. All right, do this, but it can be overwhelming, I admit, but it's so powerful when you find your groove. It also helps you pinpoint areas you can eliminate uh, unnecessary costs. So number one, just an action item, list out all your current expenses, all your monthly expenses. Uh, so some ideas once you start seeing those monthly expenses, switch from an expensive ass cable provider to something like Sling, Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, etc. Here's another option. If you already are paying for Amazon Prime from like the ordering and fulfillment purposes to getting like two day Prime shipping, whatever, you could also leverage uh, the bonus perks that they have of Amazon Music, Amazon Photos, Drive, and Prime Video. And leveraging all of these can free you up to eliminate some other services like Apple Music, Pandora, Spotify, Google Drive, Dropbox, or other streaming entertainment alternatives mentioned before, like the Sling, the Netflix, Hulu, yada, yada. You can also find more cost-effective insurance plans out there. And I got this from Dave Ramsey. I was paying an arm and a leg for this whole life Northwestern Mutual um, insurance. And I ended up going through uh, one of their affiliates, Xander Insurance, and got way more cost-effective term insurance because I'm going on the plan where like, um, by the time I'm retired, I'm not going to need life insurance or term insurance because I've saved up so much and I have a nice nest egg, a great savings to cover me and my family from there on. So I'm not going to need to be uh, doing insurance later on. So yes, find more cost-effective insurance plans out there. Xander, I'm going to make a note real quick and type it in Xander Insurance, get a quote from them. I'll add that to the show notes. Another easy one, reduce how much you go out to eat during the week. Like, come on, you don't have to go out to eat all the time. Like if you're going out to eat like more than two to three times a week, like add up how much money that is in a year. Your mind will just be like, oh my God, holy shit. Um, the next one, cut back on shitty things like gas station breakfast, energy drinks, smoking ciggies, fancy coffees, etc. These don't serve your health and they drain your bank account. So yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much a given. Add up all that. Tally up how much that cigarette pack every other day or that energy drink you're getting or that gas station burrito you buy every morning or that fancy Starbucks that's $4 a pop. You know, imagine what that's going to tally up to, how much money you could save in a year. Another one, buy off-brand private labeled food from like places like Aldi. We freaking love Aldi. I grew up thinking we were poor because we went to Aldi to shop and bought off-brand soda, but Aldi has been a godsend to us. And uh, another thing we did was like, dumb things like chocolate covered almonds. We were buying like a bag a week and it was like nine, 10 bucks a bag. We loved them. They were great snacks. But then we added up. I'm like, wow, in a year from now, like that's how much we'll spend on chocolate almonds. Like, dude, come on, stop it. Stop it now. Once in a while, we'll, we'll splurge and get one as a treat. But like as a weekly staple in our grocery order, like, dude, that's, that's dumb. That's dumb when our mindset is on paying debt and freeing up our income so we can like change our family tree and live all uh, the life we want to create the future we want to and provide that type of life and freedom for our children. So the next one, cutting overhead expenses. This is for the old business people out there. Leverage free financial software like Wave for invoices, uh, expense tracking, etc., and ditch monthly subscriptions like uh, FreshBooks, all right, or uh, QuickBooks, Intuit, whatever. Next, if Adobe Creative Cloud is too expensive, it's not providing the bang for the buck, find cheaper alternatives like Affinity Designer or leverage something like Procreate. All right, I know a lot of people go in that route at the moment as well. So number two, be smart with your credit card. Only use a credit card if you have the discipline to pay that shit off each month. Newsflash, I hope this hurts, I hope this stings a little bit, but those rewards and the, the cash back that you're like, that's why I do it. I, I, I like to get cash back and rewards with my credit card. All that shit is meaningless if you're constantly having to pay an absurd interest rate because you have a balance at the end of each month, all right? Those rewards don't mean shit when you're having so much in fees from not paying off your balance. Like, it doesn't make any sense. So don't use a credit card if you can't pay it off each month. There's no reason to do it, all right? And in my house, you know, just so you have a, an insight to what we're doing, we used to have multiple credit cards and now we only have one credit card in our household and that's my Chase Business Rewards credit card because we couldn't handle having a balance and paying it off and we were just getting tore up in interest fees. But here's a huge win for us since we've made this shift. 
For over a straight year now, I have successfully paid off my monthly balance with no interest charges or late fees for over a year. Like I've always had a balance before. Like that's a huge win for me. And that's just a behavior change. So number three, set up a freaking budget. A lot of people are like, ah, oh, why a budget? You know, that's what poor people do. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm not poor anymore and we have a budget. You know, be in control of your money. A budget just helps you be in control of your money so you know what money is coming in and where it's all going. So set up a budget. And my wife and I, we use every dollar app to track shit to make sure every dollar that we bring in then that goes out is accounted for. So we never know where money's missing. And that used to be a cause of um, our, our stress and fighting in the past is like we never knew um, where money was going. So you got to know where your money's going. Uh, make your budget constraints work for you to make power moves with your money. A budget is a beautiful thing. It's just like having constraints within a project um, helps your breed creativity. Well, having constraints with a budget will help you uh, help you be more efficient and plan for uh, bigger moves with your money. So number four, save and live within your means versus financing things. If there's something you're wanting or needing, save up for it so you can pay up front. All right, do it on your own terms. That way, when you're in a rush or you're scrambling to get that iPad or um, new phone or computer crash, you have the money set aside for it in like an emergency fund. Often people and places are going to give you a way better deal when you're able to pay in full with cash or just pay the balance up right away. So for me personally, I offer a big ass discount for students who pay in full for the coaching program versus the three month payment option. Like you're going to save a couple hundred bucks for sure. You know, what can you do with that couple hundred bucks? Go pay off a debt or uh, put it towards something else. So when you lease something, you do finance and you lease something and you're making payments, just know you do not own it. So in 20, late 2018, when I bought a new laptop um, and I'm paying monthly payments to Best Buy, I did not own this laptop. It, was not my, it wasn't my laptop. I can't say, oh, I got a new laptop today. It's like, no, I rented basically a laptop and pretty much I was a slave to Best Buy until I paid off that balance. So most people finance shit they want versus need while others don't have a savings. So finance is their only option in a pinch. So I, I understand it. I respect it. And I'm trying to just plant these seeds right now. So maybe you can change your relationship with money so you don't have to finance things. So you don't have to be a slave in debt to someone else until you can finally own it. And note, look, I'm not perfect here. Not perfect at all. I finance things most of my life. Cars, phones, furniture, electronics, etc until I made this mindset shift in 2019. And as of right now, Emily and I have an agreement that we will always pay in cash or like upfront. We'll just pay off the total balance and live within our means or find a way uh, to leverage one of these money-making tactics to get what we want sooner. We're not going to finance shit anymore. Aside from a house, that's a lot harder in the meantime. Yes, we have a mortgage on our house, but our cars are paid off for like we only have one thing that's financed and that's a house. But yes, for my future, we have big goals like my next car and our future house down the road with an acreage that we want. I'm just putting it out there to the universe. But the goal is to pay cash if possible. And the thought of like paying cash, straight up cash for a car, like a nice car or like an acreage of land or a new house, like pff, paying that straight up cash, like scares me and pushes me. It's, it's a challenge. It pushes me. It gives me something to work towards the target. So as I wrap things up, Money is a tool for progress, not stress. Money can be your biggest enemy or your best friend. And it used to be my biggest enemy for a long, long, long time and was the, the cause of so many of my fights with my wife. But when you change your relationship with money, you become more in control of your life. When you're in control of your finances, you can live a bigger life and make a bigger impact on others and make a bigger impact with your side hustle pursuits and have more freedom with your side hustle pursuits in terms of financial and time freedom. So... While I'm tossing in some quick money-making moves, I'm hoping to paint a bigger picture of ways to create the life you want for that time and financial freedom that maybe you're craving. So yes, in the short term, these tactics can help you invest in yourself to propel your side hustle further along. But in the grand scheme of things, I'm hoping that gaining control of your finances can put you in a position to one day potentially go all in on pursuing the work you love. So give yourself a target, keep your eyes on the prize, and learn how to make money work for you. PC fam, I hope you dig this little switch up today and found some ideas to uh, generate some side income to invest, save, or make a difference in your current side hustle situation. If you truly want something, you will find a way to make it happen. 
If you have to go in debt and use a credit card for something, I've done this before, you know, to, uh, to get what I wanted in the moment, I, I used a credit card, but like I made a commitment to myself to find a way to make the money, to pay it off so I don't have a balance at the end of the month or whatever it is. Like now I'm still just paying things up front with cash, but like if you want something, you'll find a way to make it happen, but make a commitment to doing it the right way, all right, and not going into debt and paying things off. So, you know, be in control of your money, be in control of your future. And again, if you found value in this episode, do me a favor, share it with your friends, your family, your following, if you feel like they could find it useful too. And I think, you know, as I transition this show more, I'm putting it out there, I want to make this shift instead of, you know, solely just for side hustlers. Like I want to talk about money, mindset, and motivation for creatives. And I think that's the way that this brand and this shift in the podcast is going to go. So if you dug stuff like this, just know I'm going to try and be more transparent about money moving forward because it's a hard topic and people act like it's so taboo and gets uncomfortable. And I want to face it and tackle it to help you have a better relationship with your money and uh, your side hustle future. So uh, if this show has helped you along your creative grind, there are two ways you can support what we're building here. One, by financially backing the show over at patreon.com slash perspective podcast like my family Iron Bean Coffee Company and Tony Minix do with as little as your cup of coffee supporting each episode to continue to thrive and grow the show to the next level that it's supposed to be. So the second way you can support the show is by subscribing and leaving a rating and review over on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, and I just learned CastBox does it too. So if you have a podcast player app, leave a review. That way I can find out if I can see it and I can accept them internationally as well. This review comes from my homegirl, Nikki, at NTJ Designs. She titles this, Thanks, Scotty. She states, if you're a creative trying to grow your business and online presence, you need this podcast. Scotty and his amazing guests, designers that I've looked up to for years, lay out everything you need to do to pave your own path to success. I've used this podcast as daily motivation to push through my side hustle after long days at my full-time job. After... Taking tips from Scotty and his guests, I started to post consistently for a month and modify my Instagram to grow true fans. On week six, I scored a big feature and a huge design page, and Adobe asked me to uh, feature one of my designs on their own Instagram. I also doubled my follower count. I owe all of this to Scotty's podcast and his online community. Couldn't have done it without them. That's dope as hell. She ends it with, if you haven't listened to this yet, what are you waiting for? Nikki Jones. So stoked to hear this little mini success story about the podcast. That's so dope. Thank you so much for leaving this uh, incredible review. Man, that really makes my day. I'm going to find a way to like repurpose this somewhere. Uh, shout out to you. Go check her work out. And as I sign off, I want to give a huge shout out to my podcast editor, Anya Brennan, executive assistant, Paige Garland, video specialist, Colton Bacher, social media coordinator, Hannah Schick, and Nick Jenkins of Bluka for all the dope theme music you hear on the show. And as you end this week strong, I want to continue to encourage you to keep showing up, keep putting in the work, and keep creating. You got this.